Today was a very good day. The passengers haven't grumbled, the trains have all run to time, and my plans for the Arlesborough line are going as, well, <laughs> planned. <laughs> now for hot buttered toast for tea at home. Oh, bother. Hello? Is this Sir Topple Hat, controller of the North Western Railway? Yes, who is this? My name is Keenan Topher. I'd represent British Railways, or the other railway, as I've heard you refer to us as. How can I help you? Well, sir, we have noticed that most of your fleet are still steam locomotives. Some of us aren't sure if you even have diesels at all. I do. Two of them. There is also one working at one of our quarries. All of them usually work on the branch lines. I do not have any diesels that primarily work on my main line. Meanwhile, on the main lines here, on what you call the mainland, we have just imposed a ban on steam engines. Yes, I believe the Northwestern Railway is not required to follow the same rules as British Railways. Very true, sir. Regardless, we encourage modernization. Therefore, we are willing to send you a diesel locomotive for half the usual price. No, thank you. Very well, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye. Grand Grove presents a Thomas and Friends audio drama. Based on the Railway series by the Reverend W. Audrey. Further based on the Thomas and Friends production created by Britt Allcroft. Further inspired by the Thomas works by David Mitten and Andrew Branner. Narrated by Tram Engine Studios. Written by Bram Grote, based on Audrey's original work. Directed by Bran Grote. Thomas and Friends, Enterprising Adventures. It had been many years since Thomas received his own branch line. After he left the yard, Percy eventually came to do his old job of shunting in the yard. When the work in the yard became too heavy for Percy, the fat controller brought Duck to do it instead, and Percy was transferred to help with the goods work on Thomas's branch line, particularly with a new harbour there. When the work in the yard became heavier still, Donald and Douglas were brought to help with the goods work, including the shunting. Only one engine was expected, but that's another story. This story really begins with the North Western Railway having a new look. From end to end, they were clearing old ballast on the track and packing the sleepers with fresh stones. The gangers were clean. Weeds no longer grew around the rails. James even stopped grumbling about dirty sidings, something he grumbled about for years. There was also a machine for spreading ballast. He didn't say much, but he was very hard working. Donald and Douglas disappeared regularly on the line that went beyond Timber Sheds, where none of the others had ever gone, at least not in years. They returned with loaded ballast trains. Where do you get the ballast? But the twins were always mysterious about it. We get it from very wee engines. Aye, very wee engines bring the ballast down from the hills. And that was all they would say. Soon the engines could talk about nothing else. What do you suppose their wee engines are? James and I thought perhaps it was some kind of magic. Some magic that I don't remember. Years ago I used to go that way occasionally. It was on a hill on that line that I lost control of a train. Was that when your brakes caught fire? Yes. <laughs> but my driver and fireman told me that they always felt they were no good being made of wood, and I got proper brakes afterwards. However, I don't remember there being any... There are we engines on that line. 
Well, I don't believe it at all. Donald and Douglas have pulled our wheels before. While the other engines were content to just talk, Duck wanted to see for himself. And the next morning, he spoke to the fat controller. Uh, beg pardon, sir. I wondered if I could take some trucks to collect ballast. Certainly, Duck. I'll arrange for you to go tomorrow. I'll have Donald and Douglas do your work in the yard till you get back. Thank you, sir! So the next day, Duck set off with some empty trucks. Here I go, past Titmuth Sheds! Look over there! What is it, driver? There's Titmuth's town hall. I've heard they've been considering building a station here due to the hall's growing popularity. Soon, however, they were out of the town, through a tunnel, and going up a hill. Oh, this must be the hill that James lost control of. Upon coming down the hill, Duck was amazed by what he saw. The line ran directly along the coast. Oh my, it's so beautiful! The line continued along the coast past sandy beaches and seaside towns. Duck enjoyed every curve and corner of the line. Sea breezes blew his smoke high in the air, and his green paint glistened in the sunlight. His driver and fireman were enjoying it too. I feel almost as if I'm on holiday. Well, you know the old saying, fireman. A change is as good as a rest. At last they arrived at a yard. Duck soon found the location on a signal box. Duck was told to push his trucks under what they called a chute. This was like a tunnel made of steel girders. On top of it stood some queer looking trucks. What do you think of our chute? Good, isn't it? Huh? Duck blinked. Standing beside him was a small green engine. The smallest he had ever seen. Even smaller than the narrow gauge engines. Where did you spring from? I've been here all the time. I'm Rex, and you, I'm sure, are Duck. How did you know? That's easy. There's only one great western engine in these parts. There was a sudden rattling and roaring. Duck's whole train shuddered. What was that? That was our chute. The bottoms of those wagons up there slide out, and the stones fall through the chute into your trucks. We may be small, but we're quite efficient. Duck puffed away, much impressed. So were his driver and fireman. That's what I call an enterprising engine. What does enterprising mean? It means he shows resourcefulness and initiative. That evening, back at Knapford, Duck spoke to the fat controller again. The line up to Allsborough is a lovely line. May I go to collect ballast from there again sometime? Certainly. Thank you very much, sir. I'm curious, by the way, why is there no passenger service on that line? Well, there was once, but I'll bother that telephone. I'll tell you some other time, Duck. Yes, sir. Oh. Hello, Northwestern Railway controller Sir Top of Matt speaking. This is Keenan Tuffer of the British Railways again. Oh, what is it this time? British Railways has another offer for you. We are now offering two diesels for the price of one. What do you say to that? Once again, I am declining. Very well, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, with that taken care of, I best see to arranging for Duck to collect ballast again. I do wonder... It wasn't long before Duck had another chance to visit Holsborough. This time there were three small engines. Hello again, Doc. This is Bert and Mike. As you can see, the small controller has given us different coats. Silly nonsense. I like big blue, Mike. It's all right for you, Bert, but not for me. Passengers will say I look like a pillow box. Shocking. Consider my feelings. When we were both green, passengers kept calling me Mike. You, you... Stow it, you two. Duck, have you seen our coaches? Where are they? Over there. 
but they're tri- I mean, they're not like ours. I agree, they are like trucks, but they behave surprisingly well. Says you. They're all right if you treat them right. Besides, passengers like them. They won't use coverts on a fine day. It's this scenery, you know. Trees, mountains, and such. Can't understand it myself, but then passengers are queer. You're right there. I'll take a good strain over a passenger train every time. Do you like trucks? Not all of them, but our big ballast toppers are different. They run on bogies as sweetly as any coach. We take them to the old mines, fill them up, and run them down here to the chute. The men pull some levers, and the whole lot's unloaded before you can say, small controller. No trouble at all. How about hot axle boxes? We soon cured that nonsense. You mean the small controller did? Same thing. <laughs> Duck chuckled delightedly. He could tell Rex and Mike loved teasing each other. I can't understand why I've never heard of you before. We've only just come from our railway in England, which closed. Your fat controller asked us to come and fetch ballast for him. And he said he'd bring plenty of passengers, too. Haven't you had passengers before? Only in England. It's our first season here. Oh, then I'll make sure that lot's come. Goodbye, goodbye! And Duck puffed excitedly away to see about it. Before long, Doc was back at Knapford. The fat controller was waiting for him. Good morning, sir! Good morning, Doc. This particular load of ballast is going to Vickerstown. The other engines are busy. Could you take it, please? Certainly, sir! Excellent. Percy just left with a goods train from the docks, though, so you'll have to wait a few minutes before you can leave. Yes, sir. While I'm waiting, you'd say you'd explain why the branch line at Alsborough no longer has passenger services? Ah, yes. Most of the branch line's business came from another railway up there. But when that railway closed, the branch was closed too. Another railway? You mean the miniature railway? Well, technically, that's not a miniature railway, but a minimum gauge railway. What's the difference? Well, miniature gauge is often smaller and is only used as a tourist attraction. Minimum gauge is usually bigger and is used for industrial as well as tourist purposes. Like ballast! Exactly. However, many years ago there was a narrow gauge railway up at Arlesborough known as the mid Sodor Railway. A narrow gauge railway like the Skylowy Railway, sir? Exactly. Same gauge and everything. The line had several mines. There was even a gold mine but most of them were lead mines. These mines provided even more traffic than the passengers did. What happened to the railway? Well, one by one the mines closed, some run out of lead or gold. Once the mines closed, it wasn't long before the railway closed too, and the engines were bought and sold. There's a legend of one, maybe even two engines, that are still out there somewhere. But that's another story. But when the Mitsudo Railway closed, the Osborne Branch closed too? Yes, apart from occasional goods trains, but even those stopped years ago. Until now. What is happening now? Well, keep it under your dome, but I'm planning to reopen the Osborne Line. <gasps> really? Really. There is a harbour up at Arlesborough, and the other harbours are seeing a lot of traffic, more than even Brendan Dots can handle at times. I believe using that harbour will help with that. Furthermore, as you said earlier, it is a lovely line. I decided to inspect the branch line and discovered that while it was very overgrown, the mid solar Railway had remained nearly weed-free. I presently discovered why. In order to mine lead, they had to dig up a lot of rocks. The mid Sodor Railway ended up using these rocks as ballast. There was still enough lead in the rocks that it kept the weeds out. There are still heaps of rocks left over from the mines. So many that the heaps spoil an otherwise lovely valley. Once I found all this out, I spoke with the Scarlowy Railway's thin controller, the Cody Fell Mountain Railway's manager and other people too. We joined together to build a railway on the bed of the first ten miles or so of the Mid-Sodor Railway. 
We decided a minimum gauge railway would mean both reduced costs and allow for a new and unique railway on Sodor. Once I learned that a minimum gauge railway on the mainland was closing, I bought the engines at once. You mean Rex, Mike and Bert? Yes, I believe they're also building a diesel engine to accompany them. Now we call their line the Arlesdale Railway. And their controller is called the Small Controller? Yes, he's my friend, Fergus Duncan. But he is called the Small Controller only in fun. He's actually quite tall. Taller than either the Finn Controller or I are. One more thing, sir. I promised the Arlesdale engines that I would make sure passengers come to their railway. Well, once I finish a few things, there should be soon. Anyway, it looks like the line ahead is clear. You can go on your way now. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Off to Vickerstown! I do wonder. On his way to Vickerstown, Duck passed through Wellsworth, Edward's station. Edward was shunting in the yard when he saw an old friend. Why, hello, Trevor. What brings you here? The vicar told me that my help was needed in the yard. It certainly is. Just then, Douglas steamed by. He was pulling a train of heavy coal trucks. Come on, Edward, stop shouting the sun when there's work to be done. I think I'll have a word with Douglas once I have the chance. At Vickerstown, Gordon had brought the express and was now getting ready for his return journey. First, he took on a large supply of coal. He was just finishing when James arrived. That's the third lot of coal you've had today, Gordon. Some might say you're being rather greedy. I'm an important engine. Important engines need plenty of coal. But I doubt if you would understand that, James. <laughs> and James snorted over to the water tower. James is taking on water. I need to do that next. I don't think I have time to wait for James to be done. Driver? There is a standpipe by the shed and turntable. It would save time if we used that instead. We have to go over there anyway to be turned round. So they did. Presently, Duck arrived with his ballast. The yard manager was very pleased to see him. Most of that is needed by the turntable and shed. Could you leave a few trucks here and take the rest over there, please? Certainly! Duck did as he was told and soon reached that part of the yard. He saw Gordon at the standpipe. Oh dear, Gordon, I wouldn't drink too much of that water if I were you. It might give you a boiler ache. Ha! What's this? Educating Gordon, Dave? First James told me on how I should take on coal, and now you, Doc, are telling me on how to take water? Big engines have big needs. Little engines are just annoying. Don't say I didn't warn you. At last, Gordon was refilled with both coal and water and was turned around. He steamed back to Vickers Town Station. As he arrived, he noticed a poster on the wall. That's what I need! There, on the poster, was an engine. He looked much like Gordon, only green. In addition, he had not one, but two massive tenders. Now, if I had two tenders like my brother, the Flying Scotsman, I wouldn't need to stop as often, and I wouldn't need to listen to silly little engines. Just then, Diesel sidled up alongside him. Diesel was not a part of the Northwestern Railway at the time, besides occasionally shunting at places like Vickerstown. You talk about tenders as if they're a mark of distinction. I guess you could say that. Well, I'm afraid no amount of tenders will save you or any other steam engine in the end. Whatever are you talking about? What? Haven't you heard? Gordon looked past Diesel and saw a big blue diesel he had never seen before. Heard what? That we diesels are taking over, of course. <laughs> and Diesel snickered away to find work. 
y y you're pulling my wheels. You both are. Oh, no, we aren't. Just look around you. Do you see any steam engines here in the station that don't work on this island? Gordon looked, and indeed he did not. All the other railway engines were diesels. No, I don't see any here. Exactly. That's because on our railway, steam is no longer at work. As a matter of fact, steam has just been abolished here. And if your controller has any sense, he will follow suit. Gordon didn't answer. He didn't think the fat controller would ever do such a thing, but it did seem evident that other controllers had. Just then it was time for him to go. He was glad to leave because he could see yet another diesel pulling in, next to the first one. Remember, Steamer, we diesels don't need tenders to make us important, not even one. For heaven's sake, is that really necessary? Meanwhile, the other railway certainly was pressuring the fat controller to follow suit. Hello, Mr. Toffer again. We have another offer. We are offering two diesels for half the price of one. Once again, no thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh. Oh. That evening, Duck was back at Knapford once again. The fat controller wished to speak with him. Duck, your work in the yard has been good all these years, and you have become familiar with the branch line to Oldsborough, as well as the Arlesdale engines. Would you like to have the branch line for your own? Oh, yes please, sir! Very well. I trust you will work hard and be a credit to me. The next morning, Duck woke up cheerful. Gordon, however, was not cheerful and said so. I'm not happy. Your firebox is out of order. No wonder after all that coal you had yesterday. Hard work brings good appetite. You wouldn't understand. I know. It's Boiler Egg. I warned you about that standpipe at Vickerstown, but you drank gallons. It's not Boiler Egg, it's- Of course it is. That water's bad. It fews up your tubes. Your boiler must be full of sludge. Have a good washout, then you'll feel a different engine. Don't be vulgar. Gordon was still hissing mournfully as he backed down on his train in there. The fat controller noticed. Cheer up, Gordon. I can't, sir. The others say I've got boiler ache, but I haven't, sir. Ever since yesterday, I've been thinking about the dreadful state of the world, sir. Is it true? What the diesels on the other railway say? What do they say? They boast that they're abolishing steam, sir. Well, such a thing will never happen on my railway. But as for the other railway, yes, Gordon, it's true. What, sir? All my Doncaster brothers drawn at the same time as me? Uh, all gone, except for one. The guard's whistle blew, and Gordon puffed sadly away. Poor old Gordon. Hmm, if only we could... Yes, I'll ask his owner at once. Days passed. Duck proved to be very useful on his new branch line, as did Oldsborough Harbour. And, just as Duck promised, he brought lots of passengers to the small railway. Passengers enjoyed the railway a lot and thought the engines to be very enterprising. There was plenty of work to keep Duck busy. Not only were there passengers to take to the small railway, but ballast to take from it too. In addition, the fat controller was building new buildings for the railway, and all that required trucks. There was so much that Duck couldn't do it alone. So Donald and Duck was continued to work on the line, taking turns helping Duck. Toby also helped with stone trucks needed for the new buildings. It took time, but at last Oldsborough had an engine shed and a turntable for Donald and Douglas. Still, Duck was the primary engine for the branch line, and he felt the responsibility deeply. He talked endlessly about it. You don't understand, Donald, how much the VAT controller relies on me. Ugh, I... I'm Great Western and... Quack, quack, quack. What? You heard? 
Quack, quack, you go. Sound like you had an egg laid. Now wish and let an engine sleep. Quack yourself. Duck stayed awake, wondering how to pay Donald out, but could think of nothing. At last, he felt too sleepy to think any more. <sighs> Our last driver in the morning. Mm. And he did just that. Donald says I quack as if I'd laid an egg. Let's pay him out. Duck's fireman pondered. Quack, do you? I know. Duck giggled, and his driver slapped his leg in delight. It's just right. He dearly loved the joke. The engines were busy that day, and nothing more was said. Not even a quack. But that night, when Donald was asleep, Duck's driver and fireman popped something into his water tank. We've done it! Oh, they won't hurt her, will they? Bless you, no. They're both kind men. She'll come to no harm. The next morning, Donald began the day with taking Ballas to Knapford. Presently, he needed to stop for water. Better keep the water tank open. Ach, driver, look at these. Good gracious, a duckling? What is a duckling doing in the water tank? Now Dodo was up behind this. The night before last, the duck was blethering so much that I said he quacked like he laid an egg. His crew must have had to put it in. The duckling was tame. She shared the dry run fireman's sandwiches and rode in the tender, quacking at intervals. The other engines enjoyed teasing Donald about her. Presently, Donald stopped at a station on Duck's branch line. Ugh! The duckling's flying off! Well, we can't wait to catch her. I guess that station is her home now. Now, you say that Duck was involved in this joke? Aye. Well, what do you say we form a joke of our own? Ugh, aye, please! That night, when the work was done, Donald's driver and fireman got busy. When Duck's crew arrived in the morning, they found something which made them laugh until they cried. <laughs> Look, Duck! <laughs> Look what was under your bunker! A nest box with an egg in it! Duck peered at it unbelievingly. Donald opened a sleepy eye. You did not say? Do you mind what I said, Duck? You must have laid it this night, all unbeknownst. Then Duck <laughs> laughed. Uh, you win, Donald. It'll take a clever engine to get the better of you. The days passed with no more excitement, until one evening saw the fat controller waiting on Knapford Station's platform. Hopefully he'll be here soon. His controller said he would arrive tonight. Excuse me, sir. A uh, Mr. Telfer. Oh, botheration, that other railway representative again. Tell him that if he must call, he must call before dinner. Um, perhaps you should tell him yourself, sir. What? Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Telfer. In the flesh, we thought it was best that I was sent to you in person. I'll pass your request to call before dinner to British Railways. Oh, what's the offer this time? A free trial, sir. Two diesels. If I may. One moment, please, Mr. Tofer. What is it, Brennan? If you please, sir, we could use another engine, especially on the main line. And while we both prefer steam to diesel, it is a free trial. And two of them. Surely at least one of them may prove useful and may learn not to give the other engines grief. Furthermore, from what I can tell, the other railway has been bothering you for a while. That may well be an understatement. Therefore, I believe you should take it. Very well. <clears throat> After talking it over with the station master, I have decided to accept your offer for a free trial of two diesels. Splendid, sir. Sign here. The fat controller read it over and signed. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you at last accepting an offer, especially as I've come such a long way. I imagine it's just as long going back. <laughs> yes, and speaking of which, I should be on my way. I took my car here, and I hope to be back home by midnight. Goodbye. Goodbye.
Um, good riddance. I hope you're right, Brennan. I hope that it will be worth it, and that the diesels won't cause even more confusion or delay. Good heavens! Is that who I think it is, sir? Ah, yes, at last. His owner said he would be coming this evening. This should cheer up Gordon. At Tidmouth Sheds, Gordon was just going to sleep, and his driver was leaving to go home. Suddenly, he stopped and ran back excited. Wake up, Gordon! The Fat Controller's given you a surprise! Look! <gasps> Gordon could hardly believe it. Back in towards him were two massive green tenders, and their engine shape was very like his own. It's Flying Scotsman! The Fat Controller brought him to see me! Oh, thank you, sir! Gordon's whistle of joy was drowned by Flying Scotsman as he drew happily alongside. The two engines didn't always see eye to eye, but with how things were now, they were both delighted to set their differences aside. At least for this visit. Next day, the two engines were photographed side by side. Two very special engines indeed, especially the Flying Scotsman with this speed record, the first to go 100 miles per hour. Well, actually... You actually believe that rubbish about the city of Truro? Rubbish? Why? Please, Clarence, not here. Sorry, Caitlin, dear. You should know better too, Theodore. Sorry, Josephine, love. Is that why you have two tenders, Scott? Because of being a special engine? No, you'd hardly believe it, Gordon, but on the mainland, they hardly have any coal and water anymore. But surely every proper railway... Exactly, Gordon. You are lucky to have a controller who knows how to run railways. Everyone got on well with Flying Scotsman. Except Henry. He was jealous. Tenders are a mark of distinction. Everybody knows that. Why has he got two? He's famous. He was the second to go 100 miles an hour, contrary to what some people may say. Besides, the other railway has no coal and water. Pooh! I can't believe that. I never boast, but I always work hard enough for two. I deserve another tender for that. Duck whispered something to Donald. Uh, Henry, would you like my tenders? Yours? What have you got to do with tenders? All right, the deal's off. Would you like them, Donald? I wouldn't have deprived you of the honor. Oh, it is a great honor, but I'm only a tank engine, so I don't understand tenders. Uh, perhaps James might... I'm sorry I was rude. How many tenders do you have, and when can I have them? Six, and you can have them this evening. Six lovely tenders? What a splendid sight I'll be. So, where did you find tenders? In a siding at Vickerstown, while I was delivering ballast there. Henry was excited all day. Do you think it will be alright? Of course! Just it was alright all the other times you asked. Just go where I told you and they'll be ready. Meanwhile, word had gone round and the others waited where they could get a good view. Edward bustled in. He had heard about the tenders, but was more interested in working. He did, however, stop to have a word with Douglas. Douglas, I've been meaning to speak with you about what you said to me the other day. Ugh, you mean when I told you to stop chatting? I admit that it was a wee bit harsh. I'm glad you realise it. You see, Trevor the Traction Engine and I have been friends for years, ever since I helped save him from scrap. Oh, don't say how hard. It makes my wheels wobble. I thought you'd understand. Trevor has proven himself useful, often helping on the railway. We could certainly use the help. Aye, what we could really use is a northern railway engine. Aye, think quickly. Just then, they heard Henry's whistle, and the engine's attention turned to him. He was cheered to the echo as he came near, but he wasn't a splendid sight at all. He had six tenders, true. They were very old and very dirty. <laughs> All were filled with boiler sludge. Had a good washout, Henry. That's right, you feel a different engine now. Henry was most embarrassed. He just wanted to go back to the shed. But then the fat controller arrived. Hello, I don't know why you're all gathered here, but it is very convenient for me. I, uh, 
Oh my, what was lit end, Henry. Anyway, the other railway has been bothering me for weeks, offering me diesel engines. I finally agreed to let two diesels arrive on trial, due to the other railway's persistence, and because I thought you could use the help with all the work. They are due to arrive tomorrow evening. And sure enough, the following evening two diesels arrived. One of them was the same that Gordon had spoken with. The other was the one who didn't like the way the first spoke to Gordon. The two diesels surveyed the shed. It's time, 7101, that we took this railway over. Shush, 199. It's their railway after all. Not for long. Our controller says steam engines spoil our image. Of course we do. We show what frauds you are. Call yourself engines. If anything happens, you care nothing for your train. You just moan for a bitter. We bring it home with only a one cylinder. Nothing ever happens to us. We are reliable. <laughs> How rude. You asked for it, now shut up. And 199 did. The next day, Henry was happily puffing along the main line. He had been having such a nice day that he nearly forgot about the tenders and the diesels. Suddenly, there was trouble. He rushed out of his cylinders and safety valve. His driver stopped the train. Bust my buffers! What is happening? Oh dear. It looks like you've lost your regulator. It's jammed wide open. The good news is, it's an easy enough fix that you don't need to go to the steamworks. It can be done at Tidmouth. The bad news is, it can't be mended until your boiler has cooled. So I'm a failed engine? Then how can I get back to Tidmouth? Well, you have plenty of steam, and I can still use your reverser. However, between the field regulator, and there being no turntable anywhere nearby, it'll be easier to take you home backwards. Backwards? Then everyone would notice I'm a failed engine. But there was nothing he could do. Boko took his train and Henry rolled home to end the third. This would happen after Duck fooled me with those tenders. Now they're laughing me all over again. Presently, he reached a signal box and stopped, whistling for a road. Opposite the box stood Diesel 199 with a train of oil tankers. Worse and worse. Now, old Reliable will laugh at me too. But 199 was too busy arguing with the signalman to even notice Henry. My engine's failed. I need a fitter. I can't pull this train anymore. At last, the signalman turned to Henry. For pity's sake, take this spam can away. He's failed. The Limited is coming. And all he does is wail for his bitter. Spam can? I... Stow it. I have a tin opener and I'm not afraid to use it on you. <laughs> 199 subsided at this dreadful threat. Henry, still in better working order than 199, pulled him and his train out of the way. The diesel didn't help. It just sucked. The Limited soon rushed by, being pulled by 7101, who growled as he went by. Look, Spankan, there's your little pal. 199 said nothing. He hoped 7101 hadn't noticed. 7101 hadn't noticed. He had troubles of his own. His coaches seemed to be getting heavier. Come on, stop holding back. But growling at the coaches did no good. It wasn't their fault. It was 7101. You see, Engines have a pump called an injector. It draws air out of the train's brake pipes to keep the brakes off. If it fails, air leaks in and the brakes come on. Gently at first, then harder and harder. 7101's injector had failed. The brakes were already leaking on as he passed Henry and 199. He struggled on for half a mile before being brought to a stand, growling furiously, unable to move. The signalman was soon notified. For heaven's sake, in the fat controller once said it was the big steam engines that were always going wrong. Now the Limited has failed too. Well, well, well. Did you hear that, Henry? <laughs> yes, and I thought they'd be laughing at me. 
Now the joke's on them. Hmm. Moving two dead diesels and their trains would be no joke at all for a failed engine. Do you think you could do it? I'll have a good try. Anyway, 7101's better than old Spamcan. He tried to shut him up last night. Come on then, we mustn't keep the limited passengers waiting. Get moving, you! Henry pulled 199, still sulking, into motion and started the rescue. Henry gently buffered up to 7101's train. While the two drivers talked, his fireman joined his front brake pipe to the coaches. It's better than we thought, Henry. 7101 can pull the train if we can keep his brakes off, so the only weight we'll have is Span Khan's goods. Phew! That's a mercy. I'm already feeling rather puffed out. Are you ready? Yes, I am. So, with 7101 growling in front and Henry gamely puffing in the middle, the long cavalcade set off to limit his next stop, Hellstorm. Donald and Flying Scotsman were waiting there. They cheered as Henry clapped by. Well done, Henry! Yes, well done! Henry braked the coaches thankfully. Bancam and the tankers trailed far behind. The passengers buzzed out of the train like angry bees, but the fat controller told them about Henry, so they forgot to be cross and thanked Henry instead. They called him an enterprising engine and took his photograph. The passengers were thrilled too, then flying stopped them back down on their train. If the guard hadn't tactfully shooed them to the coaches, the train would have started later than ever. Donald took 199's goods train. Take 199 with you and return him to the other railway. I will write my reviews later. I still need to give some thought about 7101. For now, I can tell modernization clearly is not all it's cracked up to be. Henry and 7101 went away together. I'm sorry about last night. That's alright. You did shut Odd Reliable up. And made a fool of myself today. Rubbish! A failed injector might happen to anyone. I'd lost my regulator. You? Failed? And yet? Well... Emergency. You know, trains must get through. 7101 said no more. He had a lot to think about. Donald returned back to Knapford just as Douglas was preparing to leave with the midnight goods to the other railway. Evening, Donny. Evening, Doggy. Get your diesel back to the other railway. Aye. And now I'm off to the other railway with me. I mean, like, it's pretty ironic. Hey, this is I get back. You're headed the same way. The Midnight Goods is a special overnight train that runs twice a week. Sometimes it goes to a strange part of the island that steam engines rarely, if ever, go to. Usually, however, it goes to the other railway on the mainland. Douglas took the train to the other railway with no trouble that night. He then had to shut his trucks for the journey back to Sodor. He had just finished and was almost ready to leave when he heard a noise. That sounds like a steam engine. But I thought I was the only steam engine around here tonight. He heard the noise again. This time it almost sounded despairing. Who's there? Are you a fat controller's engine? Aye, and proud of it. Thank goodness! Douglas now found the speaker. It was a tank engine, which looked like he was once belonged to the Great Western Railway, though he looked different from Doug. Behind him was a brake van, who also looked like he was Great Western. Now, however, they both looked ready for scrap. They even had scrap written on them. I'm Oliver! And I'm Toad. We're escaping to your railway, but we ran off coal, and I just ran out of steam! Looks like it's scrap you're escaping from, is that correct? Yes, it is. 
Doug was shivered to think about it. He knew what he must do. There is glad I'll be to help you, but we mightn't work fast. Both crews joined in. They wrote out paperwork and transit labels, saying that Oliver and Toad were for the Northwestern Railway. Douglas marshalled them onto the front of his train. No time to turn around, I'm on one tender first. Come on. And he set off. A passing diesel noticed. Hey, that's Douglas escaping. But Douglas put firmly on. Take my notice. But before they could clear the station throat, they were stopped. The foreman's lamp shone on Oliver and Toad. Aha, a western engine and a goods brake too. You can't take these. Douglas's driver spoke up. Can we do? They're all for us. See for yourself. Douglas's guard showed him the labels and papers. Oliver's crew, hiding in Toad, hardly dared to breathe. Hmm. Seems in order, but it's queer. Sure, and it is. But I could tell you queer. So could I. Right away, guard. Thing. We've had force. We've been running away for a while. Running at night. Friendly signalmen would pass us from box to box, but no trains were about. We got on well, till Control had about a mystery train. Then they tried to hunt us down. What did you do? A signalman let us hide in an old quarry branch. Driver, fireman, and guard flogged the cutting with rubbish and levered one of their approaching rails away. We stayed there for weeks, with diesels burning and growing like hogs outside. Well, he was very bright and zany. It's not late to you. Presently, they rolled over the Vickers Town Bridge and onto the Fat Controller's Railway. We're home. They can't catch you now. Did you hear that, Toad? Ah, oh, yes, Mr. Oliver. I'm very relieved. So am I, Toad. No, we need to get to Yard Brooks. We won't sleep deep. Unbeknownst, I find a place for Oliver and Toad. They soon reached the steamworks as dawn was breaking. Douglas tried to be quiet, but the night foreman heard them and had to be told their secret. I know just the place. He showed them an empty siding nicely hidden away. Goodbye and thank you. The steamworks had a turntable, so Douglas was able to be turned and he returned to his train to finish his journey. That's like Oliver's an enterprising engine. I won away here with Donald, but I'd have been feel to do it on my own. Douglas arrived back in time to see Flying Scotsman heading home, along with his enthusiasts. We have all been honored to have Flying Scotsman visit. Thank you, Flying Scotsman, for coming. And thank you too, Mr. Pegler, for allowing him to visit. Please tell everyone, whatever happens elsewhere, Steam will always be at work here. We shall be glad to welcome all we want to see and travel behind real engines. This announcement was greeted with cheers and flying spots in the night. Will you now come back again? At last, Douglas could tell the other engines about Oliver and Toad. They were all excited about it, and agreed that something must be done for them. I'm feared some nasty diesel may creep in, and him there alone, lacking steam to even whistle for help. You're right, he won't be safe until the Fat Controller knows. Douglas should tell him at once. Is it me speak to the Fat Controller? It's forward he'd think me, and may be interfering. Well, here he is. Now what's all this about? An awkward silence followed. Uh, beg pardon, sir, but we do need another engine. I agree, Duck. That's why I'm giving 7101 another chance. Their faces showed such dismay that the Fat Controller had difficulty with his own. And another awkward silence followed. Sir, we had hoped for a real engine. They are rare. And unless one escapes, there's little hope. But sir, one has. And thanks to you, Douglas, is now at our works. 
Sir, is there anything you don't know? <laughs> More than you think. But Oliver's crew told me all you did, Douglas. Ah, sir. You couldn't see a bra wee engine and him in trouble and not do a wheel's turn. More than a wheel's turn, I fancy. Douglas, I'm pleased with you. Oliver and Toad will soon be ours. And they are just what we need for Duck's branch line. Loud cheers greeted this announcement. That, of course, puts everything right. 7101 soon returned to Sodor, now with a green paint instead of blue. Henry spoke a good word for him and the others gave him a welcome. He had good manners for a start, so Henry didn't find it hard to teach him the ways of the Northwestern Railway. 7101 finds him different from those of the other railway, but much more interesting. He is now quite a useful entry, the first diesel to be primarily for Sodor's main line. The engines teased him at first because of his growls. They said he was like a bear. He still growls, not because he is cross, but because he can't help it. His name Bear has stuck. He likes it. It's nicer than just a number. Having a name means you really belong. The Fat Controller soon had Oliver and Toad mended and painted in full Great Western colours. They now work on Duck's branch line. Duck usually takes the passengers while Oliver usually takes the goods. When Oliver takes passengers instead, Toad either joins him with the coaches or another engine takes Toad instead. Of all the engines apart from Oliver, Douglas is Toad's favourite. Duck and Oliver are very happy to work the Oldsborough branch line. They boast that they reopened it and are very proud of this indeed. The others laughed at first and called their branch line the Little Western. Duck and Oliver were delighted, and now no one thinks of calling it anything else, and so the Little Western it will always be. As for Donald's duckling, she settled at the station she got off at, and became a pet with passengers and staff. She carefully inspects all parcels and luggage, and sees that the porters stow them away properly in the vans. When she wants to swim, she flies to a nearby pond, but always returns to welcome the trains. She stands by the cab, quacking imperiously, till the driver or fireman give her something to eat. Donald is her favourite, and she sometimes allows him to give her rides, but she always gets off at her own station. Here comes Donald with his duck. There you go, back home my wee quackadoo. Welcome back, Dilly. The station master calls her Dilly. Donald calls her his wee quackaroo. But to everyone else, she is always Donald Duck. Everything you right, Duck? Yes. I just keep thinking about something the Fat Controller said. About the railway that used to be where the Allsdale Railway is now. He said something about a legend of at least one engine still being out there. And one of the narrow gauge engines, Peter Sam, once said something to me about an engine on his old line. Did he say his name? Yes, Duke. I thought all Duke engines were, uh, you know. But I keep wondering if, uh, um... If the engine Peter Sam knew is a legendary engine seller on what's left on Med Sodor? Yes, but again, I'm just wondering. Time for us to go, Duck. Goodbye, Duck. Bye, Mr. Duck. So long, Oliver. Toad. 